Welcome to today's tutorials. Today we'll be taking the concept and idea of limits. Without wasting my time, let's get it done. Okay, so we'll be taking limits today. Now, when many people hear the word limit or limits, the idea is very simple. But to get the concept, it's very, very difficult to get the concept of what limits. So many people can compute limits, but actually do not know what limits mean. They only compute limits without what any explanation. But at this level, we have to find the ideas and concepts behind limits and try to use them with understanding. Let's consider a graph on the Cartesian plane. We are going to use this graph to explain what limits are. So we have the graph of the function here this way and we have been asked to explain or define limits. Now before we define limits we need a particular value on the x axis which will be defining the limits towards Assuming we have a value here which is C on the x axis. So as the x values are approaching C or are coming towards C, both from the left direction and from the right direction, what happens to the function or the graph? But we don't come to C exactly back. What happens when we are moving towards C from the right direction and go from the left direction? How does the graph or the function, let's say f of x, behave? So the way the graph behaves, as all the values of x are approaching a particular number on the x-axis, which we are naming C here, how does the graph what behave? So assuming we have C here, which corresponds to this side of the graph. We can see that when the graph is moving, that's from the left, as the x values are approaching C, you can see that the graph is increasing, increasing and what? Decreasing till it gets somewhere here. And also when we are coming from the right, let's take somewhere here, the graph increases till it gets somewhere here. So we can see that the behavior of the graph changes as it's getting closer and closer towards the number which we are denoting by C, both from the left and from the right. So how the graph behaves as it's getting towards this particular number on the x axis we are noting by C. The graph, the way it behaves, that's what limits stands for. But the only thing that we don't get exactly to C, just approaching, just moving around C without what actually stepping at C. So mathematically, we can write the limit of a function as it's approaching a particular number on the x axis, let's say C, as the limit of the function f of x as x approaches the number C as we denote it on the graph. It will be equal to, let's say, L, the behavior or where the behavior is moving us to. We denote it by what? The capital L. So we read this as the limit of F of X as x approaches c is equal to l so then l is a behavior that we are talking about now also we can explain this graphically using the same graph here we can see that when we are approaching c the graph is either increasing or what decreasing so limits actually tells us the height of the graph as the values are approaching what? C or any number replaced by C. 
as the graph is approaching C, what is the height of that graph? So here you can find out that the height of the graph will be as all the values of x are approaching what c. So that height is actually what we refer to as L here, and it's the behavior of the graph at c that is approaching c. We would like to explain this mathematical representation of limit further. You can remember that when we started, we said the limit is being taken as the values of x are approaching c, both from the left hand side and from what? The right hand side. But there is nothing showing here that we are making movement from the left hand side as well as the watch, right hand side. So this one can be written further as the limit of the function f of x as x approaches c from the left. We use a subscript, sorry, a superscript, which is in the form of a negative sign to denote the movement from the left hand side of the graph to the left hand side. So we use a negative sign to denote movement from the left hand side it gives us our behavior L and also taking the limit of the function f of x here as s approaches c from the right so we can also find out that we make movement also from the right towards the number c so the right hand side we denote it with a superscript of what class. So anytime you see this, we read it as the limit of the function f of x as x approaches c equals l. But here we have details, so we read it as the limit of f of s as x is approaching c from the left equals rl and also the limit of the function f of s as x approaches c from the what right so these two signs are very important this one also equals l so if both the left hand side limit and the right hand side limit are equal, we say the limit what exists. So the limit exists if the right hand side limit is equal to the what? Left hand side limit, as we've explained here. So this limit will exist if the left hand side limit is the same or is equal to the right hand side limit. So when this and that are equal, then we can say the limit what exists. So in another way, you can write it as the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left is equal to l and at the same time l is also equal to the limit of the function f of x as x approaches c from the right so if these two hundred side limits are equal then we can say for sure that the limit exists. So these are some of the concepts or ideas of limits. Now